What's going on, everybody? You're tuned in to another episode of the Music Mastery Podcast with your host, Lizzie the Gifted. What I do on this podcast is I do a brand new audio episode every single day documenting my journey as an independent musician. If you're watching this on YouTube right now, do me a favor. Go subscribe to the audio podcast. Share it with a friend. If you're already listening to the audio version right this second, share this episode with a friend. I guarantee you that this episode is about to be jam-packed with stuff that you need to hear. I freaking did it. I accomplished, in my opinion, the greatest accomplishment that I've ever done in my life. I finished the Live Hard program created by Andy Frisella from Real AF Podcast. Now let me tell you about what this is, okay? For those of you who have been following you know, my journey and who have been following me for, uh, for a while, you've probably started to hear about this. You probably know a little bit about what 75 Hard is. You know, but I'm gonna explain the entire program to you, how my year went, and the changes that it's made for me in my life, okay? And for those of you, if this is your first time watching this, and maybe you're somebody who found this because of a keyword that I put in there about 75 hard, I'm I'm super happy to have you here as well. Uh, And if it's possible, Andy, if you're watching this, or Vaughn, if you're watching this, or Sal, if you're watching this, or DJ, or or Joe, or Madad, if any of you guys are watching this, um, cool, that'd be sick. So that'd be amazing. So, um, well, what is the program? So I'm gonna start off by crafting each part of the program, and I'm gonna explain. So. The first phase of it, it's called 75 hard. Now, what is 75 hard? People mistake 75 hard for being a fitness program. Although there's fitness aspects, it's not just a fitness program. What is it? So it's five things that you've got to do every single day for 75 days in a row. If you mess any of them up, you have to start over on day one. Here's what they are. Number one, work out twice a day. Each workout has to be 45 minutes each, and one workout has to be outdoors. Yes, walking counts as a workout. So if you want, you can do a workout in your weight room, pump the weights out for 45 minutes, then later on in your day, you can go outside for a 45 minute walk outdoors, that counts. No matter what the conditions are, obviously be responsible if there's a tornado storm going on, or if there's a thunderstorm going on, or if you could literally put your life at risk, obviously don't go outside. But Most of the people that choose to do this are not gonna have to experience that. Negative 15 degrees outside does not count as weather that you can't go outside in. Rain does not count. Um, So that's 75 hard, okay? And I'm gonna explain my experience with 75 hard, then I'll go into each of the uh, three phases after that. So number one, um, so that was number one's workout twice a day. Number two, stick to a diet that and you can choose your diet but you got to eat clean and you can't have a bite of food off your diet you can't have a cheat meal you can't even have a lick of food off of your diet and no alcohol so when i say it has to be clean that means that there are certain diets where you know two of them that come to mind are counting your macros and intermittent fasting macros means you break your diet down with protein carbs and fat and you have to get a certain amount of protein, carbs, and fat, and you can basically eat anything you want as long as you get in those. Intermittent fasting would mean you can only eat within a certain time frame, but you can eat whatever you want, meaning you can eat from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m., that's it, uh, or 12 to 6 p.m. or something like that, but you can eat any items of food. You can do those kinds of diets, but you can't just eat any types of food. It has to be a clean diet. All right, number three, I'm gonna tell you about how I did all of these things afterward. Number three, drink a gallon of water a day. That's pretty simple. I uh, I right now have this thing here. This is a half gallon, so I'll drink two of these a day. I usually drink more, but you know I just know to drink two of these a day. Grab yourself something. I used to just get a plastic bottle at the store, but they ended up kind of breaking and leaking, and I would lose them. So that bright red, I don't ever lose it. <laughs> I do lose it sometimes, but anyway, okay. Number four. Read 10 pages of a book, but the book has to be nonfiction. Um, some book that's gonna help you get better. Entrepreneurial book, personal finance book, personal development, um, autobiographies, biographies, as long as they're factual, right? I've got all these books here. I'll tell you about some of the books I read, you know? Um, ten. It's not a time to grab your favorite fiction or novel and, and relax. It's not that, it's time to get better. Right, And then the fifth thing is taking a progress picture, which means 
picture you know that will show the progress you've made it can be any picture you can keep your clothes on if you'd like I took my, just did with my shirt off you know if you're a, a female maybe you want to keep on a sports bra or something like that it's up to you it just needs to be a progress picture okay next um, should I go through all the I'm gonna go through all the phases and then I'll talk about my experience then after that that's 75 days in a row 75 days in a row after that is called phase one. So 75 hard is not phase one. 75 hard is the introduction. Then there's phase one. Between 75 hard and phase one, you can have any period of time, you can have any break you want, any length. You don't have to go right away. Some people do, I didn't, but you can go phase one. Phase one is 30 days, and it's everything from 75 hard, but you have to add three things, okay? Everything from 75 hard, and here's what the three things are. Number one, visualization for 10 minutes a day, which means, you know, to be honest with you, I'm still not very good at visualization, but it basically means it's not the same as meditating, it's different. Visualization means imagining the kind of life you want, imagining the kind of person you want, like visualizing the things that you want in your life that you want to manifest. There's that. Um, then there's adding three items to your power task list. What is that? A power task list is a list of tasks that you got to complete in a 24 hour period, in, in a day that will help you toward your career. A power list and 75 hard are different, completely different. So if you've never had a power list before, if you've never organized your time, if you've never put a task list together, you would have three items. I, however, had already had items. I had five. I was, I've been doing a five item power task list since December of 2017. So adding three more things would mean I'd have to do eight things every day. Okay? And then the last one, five minute cold shower. Now, you can get in the shower hot and soap yourself off and shampoo your hair while it's hot. And then once you're all done with the soap, you just turn it to cold and sit there for five minutes. Simple. It has to be cold enough to make you uncomfortable. It has to be cold enough where it's hard to breathe. You probably want to shriek and scream. That's how cold it should be for five minutes. That's phase one. You do it for 30 days. Now, there's phase two. What's phase two? Phase two, the thing is, between phase one and phase two, you have to take a minimum of 30-day break. So you can't go into phase two right away. You have to go from the end of phase one to the start of phase two. It has to be at least 30 days. What is phase two? Phase two is simply everything from 75 hard. So it's not the cold shower, the three extra power task lists, or the visualization. Those are not the requirements. It's simply the five things from 75 hard, but it's in a 30-day period. The, ch the, the so-called challenging part of it is the break between phase one and two, that 30 day break. I put quotes because for some reason for me that was not challenging at all. I was able to get right into it. Then there's phase three. Phase three is everything from phase one, which is all the 75 hard to, oh no, no, no. No, that's not true. It's not everything from 75 hard. No, it's not everything from phase one. What it is, I'm on Instagram right now because I'm going to check exactly what they are because now I'm forgetting. I just did it too. How did I just do it? Oh, okay. Phase three. I got it. It's everything from 75 hard. But yes, you have to add three power task items. You got a cold shower. These two next items were super challenging. You have to talk to a stranger every day, meaning you have to meet somebody new and learn something new about that person but you can't use social media. It has to be in person. It can't be on the phone. It's gotta be in person. And then the last one, one random act of kindness. Okay, so that's all the stuff. That's all the phases. Now I'm gonna talk to you about my experience kinda quick with each one of them. With 75 hard, my diet was no refined carbs, no refined sugar, no dairy. That was my diet, okay? What the heck does that mean? A refined carb and a, a complex carb, they're different. Refined carb would be, you know, bread, crackers, cake, cookies. Uh, I don't know if I can think. Flour. 
flour is a refined carb, so anything that's got flour in it. A complex carb is like potatoes, yams, brown rice, quinoa, beans, I think beans, right? Stuff like that, that's a complex carb, okay? No refined sugar, what's refined sugar? Refined sugar, anything in a box that says added sugars, two grams, that's refined sugar. Obviously candy. Uh, there's a lot of milk that has refined sugar. And then the no dairy is pretty simple. Anything that has dairy, none. Um, so no cheese, ice cream, milk, anything like that. That was my diet. It's different than conventionally people think, oh, you did keto. Keto is no sugar. Like there's only like one fruit on keto you can have or two fruits. You can have like blueberries and that's it. You can't have like peaches and mangoes and pineapple. You can't have that on keto. I didn't do keto. And you have to have zero carbs. I had rice, like brown rice, quinoa, potatoes. No carbs on, 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 on keto. I didn't do that. I didn't do keto. Okay, I did my thing, which is I guess they call it Whole30 nowadays. Um, exercises, various, you know, well, and here's what's crazy. When I started 75 Hard was December 2nd, 2019, no COVID. So gyms were open. So I was going to the gym, I was playing basketball in the mornings, I was lifting weights, and then I was walking at night, pretty much. Or I'd wake up early and go for a run. Stuff like that, I would mix it up. Um, the books that I've read, um, I read all these books actually. I'll, I'll, I'll pull this one out. I'll pull this one out. These are the two that made the biggest impact. Relentless by Tim Grover. This is one of the best books I've ever read. It lines up perfectly with 75 Hard. This is a great book to guide you. Um, I'm going to read this book once a year. I love this book. So this book really changed my life. This guy is the guy who trained Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Dwayne Wade, and many other greats uh, in the NBA. The guy knows what he's talking about. And then this book, Money Master the Game by Tony Robbins. You know, I haven't read every finance book. In fact, this is the only finance book I've ever read, but I could argue that it's one of the best finance books in the game. As you can see, I've got some good sticky notes, um, tons of underlining. I mean, this is your playbook to become super wealthy. This is it. This is the playbook right here. And so um, it's a really great book. So both of these books are really good. I read a bunch of other books, but those are the two that really made a big difference to me. Those are the ones I'm gonna highlight. All right, here's my story with 75 Hard. 75 Hard, I was doing it. I was doing great. I was, I was, I was making great strides with it. And then day 39 came around. Day 39, I did my thing. I went to sleep on day 39. I woke up on day 40 and I realized, oh no. I forgot to take my progress picture the day before. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I had a freaking meltdown. I was, I freaked out. I remember being so mad at myself that I pressed my nose against my mirror and looked myself in the color of my eyes and I was calling myself just nasty names. I don't wanna say I'm here, but I was saying mean things to myself, just upset. And, and I just, I couldn't decide if I was gonna start over or not. That was the thing that was weird. I went on my walk, I was freaking out. I called like 10 people, nobody answered the phone, thank goodness. Eventually, Someone answered, I told them, they're like, dude, don't start over, or just do a 76th day, like don't start over, it's not a big deal. It just didn't sit right with me. Went, you know, went home, talked to my parents, my mom said don't start over, it's ridiculous. Talked to my dad, even he was like, you're being too hard on yourself, don't start over, blah, blah, blah. He could tell that that answer wasn't sitting right with me. And then my dad goes, you know what? What's so hard about starting over? This is your life now. You're never gonna quit. So why not just start over? It's not that hard. That was what I needed to hear. And I made the decision. Then people from that morning walk started calling me back and I told them what happened and I told them I was starting over. They said, dude, you're freaking crazy. Like you don't need to start over. I go, yes I do. On day 40. Mind you, the fifth item on 75 Heart was the progress pick. The other four things, exercise, Diet, water, book. I literally had done all of those perfect. So I started over. Um, 
Yeah, I started over. Damn, I wish I had my uh, my other phone. I wonder if I have the pictures. I wonder if I have my progress pictures. Because I want to show you guys. Um, oh my god, I do have them. I have them right here. So I had to re. So I started December second, twenty nineteen, and then I had to start over on January tenth, twenty twenty. I'm going to show you some of the pictures too. It's crazy. So, anywho. Um, so I had to start over. I started over and I killed it. And then I ended up finishing it. I finished 75 hard on March 24th, 2020. Yep. So really I had gone 115 days in a row of, you know, the diet, the exercise, the water, and the reading. So I finished a lot of books. Uh, I finished this, this book in that time and I finished this book in that time. It's a lot, it was a lot of 115 days. Take a break. I do phase one. Phase one was amazing. Um, I finished a couple other books. Phase one was great. It was honestly phase one was pretty easy for me. Like I didn't. It wasn't that hard. Thirty day break. I do phase two. Phase two is. I'm sorry, but it was phase two was easy. Phase two is not that hard for me. I, I loved it because I fell in love with the program. The program. I fell in love with this program, and I still love it. And I was like, dude, this isn't hard for me. After phase two. Oh, I forgot to I forgot to mention one criteria. Damn it. I forgot to mention one criteria. You've got to complete all four of these tasks in one calendar year from the day you start. So I started 75 hard December 2nd, 2019. That means I need to finish all four of those phases December 2nd, 2020. Well, guess what? I'm recording this on December 3rd, and on December 4th is when you're probably going to watch this or hear this of 2020. I finished all four of them. I forgot to mention one thing about phase three, and I'm really upset that I, I forgot to mention this. Phase three, you have to end phase three. Day 30 has to be the same day as your one year anniversary from when you started. So I started 75 hard December 2nd, 2019. That means that day 30 of phase three needs to be December 2nd, 2020. And that's exactly what happened. Lined up perfectly. Um, I actually ended up doing an extra day on accident. So I did 31 days in phase three on accident because I started too soon. Whatever. It's an extra day of, you know, it's, why not? Um, um, where was I? So, so when you finish phase two, however, the difference is between phase two and phase three, it, you just, you got to wait until phase three for that last 30 days. You can't get ahead of schedule. After I finished phase two, I took a break. I took like a 30 day break and I was just living life regularly. Things started to slip. I didn't start, I wasn't drinking a gallon. Uh, I wasn't doing cold showers every day. I wasn't reading every day. I wasn't exercising twice a day. In fact, some days I wasn't exercising at all. And I was gaining a little bit of weight. It wasn't a big deal, but what happened was my mind, bro. I started getting depressed. I started getting anxiety. I started getting sad and frustrated. And I was like, I need to get back on the program. So I did phase 2.5, my own. I just did phase two again. Cause I was like, bro, I need to do this again. I need to be in this program. I did phase two and then I just finished phase three where I had to talk to a stranger every day and do a random act of kindness with journaling. The random act of kindness, you have to write down what your random act of kindness was. All right, so let me show you some of the, so I just finished the program. Um, I won't show you the pictures yet, but what the heck is this program all about? As you can obviously tell, there are parts of this program that are not fitness. Reading isn't fitness, is it? Talking to a stranger isn't fitness. Visualization isn't fitness. Random acts of kindness, that's not fitness. It's not a fitness program. Fitness is part of it. I learned so much from doing this program. I learned about myself. I learned discipline. I learned habits that really helped me. I became the person, I became better than what I wanted. I wanted to be a certain type of person. I became better than that. I got rid of the voice in my head that was always telling me not to wake up early, not to exercise. You know, I got rid of that voice. I got rid of that voice. I got rid of that voice. I got rid of the voice that was holding me back from achieving my goals. I got rid of the voice that makes excuses. I got rid of the voice that was, that was giving me an out 
for when I wanted, didn't want to do something. I got rid of it. I stepped into a new realm of reality. My reality is different now. I know what's right from wrong. I know the real right from wrong. And I have a whole new perspective and a new sense of gratitude. I'm thankful. But you know what I'm thankful for? There was an external force at work here. Andy. Andy Frisella was my external force. I wouldn't have known about this program had it not been for Andy and what he had built on the MF CEO Project podcast, which later turned into Real AF. I wouldn't have known about this. If Von Kohler wasn't there to help Andy build this podcast, I wouldn't have known about it. If Tion Connor, my friend, didn't tell me about the MF CEO Project, I wouldn't have known about it. So I gotta give it up to those people. But at the end of the day, I did the work. So I'm grateful for them. I'm grateful to God because God gave me the spirit to be able to do things like this. God chose me as a messenger. And so I'm grateful to God. And I'm grateful to my mom and dad for being so supportive. But I'm grateful for me. At the end of the day, what I learned was you got, I gotta stand on my own two feet and I gotta be in this room by myself, no one else, with no help, that's life. And you gotta stand that way too. If you're not able to do something while no one's watching you, you will not achieve. Freedom comes to those who hustle. Grind hard to live free, that's my quote. Grind hard to live free. If you want freedom, you grind. If you want freedom, you produce results. If you want freedom, you control what you can control. That's what I learned. And I didn't learn it from reading a book. I didn't learn it from hearing a podcast. I didn't learn it from watching a YouTube video. I learned it through living it. I learned it through busting my ass every day. Let's do the math, I always forget. In the past, 365 days I learned it this thing doesn't have a calculator I learned it through 215 days I believe is what it is um, let me think about it here it was 120 plus 115 that's 235 days. Oh my God. 215 plus 10 is 25. Yeah, so 225 days out of 365 days I was on this program. That's how I learned those important life lessons. I learned this from getting through the challenges in my brain that were telling me to stop. I wake up and I go, I don't wanna wake up at 5.30 but I do it anyway. I wake up and go, I don't wanna go out, to, it's cold today. Go on a walk. I don't listen to that. We're on episode like 224 of this podcast. 224 days in a row that I have put out a podcast. We're going to 400. And as a matter of fact, once I get to 400, it's very likely I will continue every day because I really, really like doing it. Did I like doing it every day at first? Hell no. Hell no. The first 50 days, it was hard, bro. It's easy for me now. And when it comes to competition, I feel very competitive, but I'm competing more with me. And I didn't just, and that didn't come from a freaking, that's a popular thing to say, compete with yourself, don't compare. I still compete with other people. In my own head, I'm competing. But the problem is I know I'm better than them. 
So it's not much to compete in my opinion. For me, the only reason that there's people ahead of me is because they got started earlier, not because they're better. Because in my space, there is nobody better than me. I am the best in my space. Music, music marketing, independent music space. I'm the best. I'm the best, I'm the best. But people got start. I only just started 200 days ago. That's the problem. Everybody else started years ago. So I'm just late. That's it. But that's okay. I just need to keep going. 400 days, after 400 days, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be solidified after 400 days. That's why I know I'm gonna keep going for more than 400 days. You know what? Entrepreneurs on Fire podcast, which was by John Lee Dumas, JLD. He went a thousand days in a row putting out a pod. A thousand. That's kind of more the number I'm thinking of. I just haven't committed to it, but that's really the number I'm looking at. 400 is, I'm just trying to slowly increase my numbers. But like, why? how am I able to do this? I decided to do the Music Mastery podcast every day. I believe it was in April 20 something. So it was right after I finished 75 hard, no coincidence. Because when I finished 75 hard, my mentality was I can do anything. I could do anything I put my mind to. I didn't hear that. I mean, I heard that. I've heard people say that. We've all heard people say that. You can do anything you put your mind to. If you can dream it, what is it? You know, if you can dream it, you, you, can, you, can, you can do it or some shit like that. Yeah, you can. You can do it, but do it. Actually do it. Like, don't just dream it. Dreaming it is good. Don't give up on your dreams. You should be dreaming. But if that's all you're doing is dreaming, it's like my favorite rapper Kevin Gates says, a vision without action is merely a dream. So dreams are, are great. It's a great way to start, but like you need to go somewhere and do it. People get so confused as to what to do. I remember those times. I had all this ambition and this fire and this, comp, and this competitiveness, but I didn't know what to do with it. I was aimless. 75 hard locked me in. And it has nothing to do with music production or building your brand or gaining fans. None of those things directly helped me gain fans. But you know what they did do? They gave me the tools to do things to help me gain fans. Like put out a podcast every day. Like networking with million dollar producers like Anno Domini and Legion Beats. I mean, it gave me the strength to do what I know I needed to do to win. And it gave me the realization that I am the best and that I'm going to be the best. And that I'm not afraid to say that I'm the best. That I'm not, af I'm not afraid anymore. I'm not afraid to say what I want to say, that I believe. And I don't let people push me around anymore at all. Because I know at the end of the day, no matter what, I can stand on my own. I don't need you. I don't need anyone. I love you. If you're watching this and you're like actually supporting me, I freaking love you, of course. But if you were just like, I hate you, Lizzie, you suck. Then I'd be like, cool, next, I don't care. Because people have literally said that. People have hated on me. People have said I'm stupid, I'm this, that, the third, whatever, bro. People have said I sneak this. People have said I'm a course jumper. You know, pe 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 people have said you never, you have no structure. I could read DMs. I could read DMs. Cool, man. I'm relentless. And I'm excited. I'm excited. 2021, baby. If you got any value out of this podcast or this video, do me a favor. Go and subscribe to the podcast and leave a rating, leave a review, and share with a friend, all right? Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll talk to you again soon. Peace.